sutra, general solely expansive, such as such as the retributions that those who ridicule and slander others' acts of worship will undergo. How much worse will the retributions be if, besides their slandering, they have other evil views? Commentary. Therefore, universally expansive, you should know. Such are the retributions that those who ridicule and slander others' acts of worship in making offerings to a store bodhisattva will undergo. For this type of evil retribution, they would even have to be in the house for 1,000 ends, among the hungry ghosts for another 1,000 ends, among the animals for another 1,000 ends, then become human beings with the retribution of being poor, lowly, and disabled. Someone wonders, must they endure 1,000 ends to become human beings? Is this definite right? That is for sure. Shakyamuni Buddha personally established the laws for the house. However, there is an exception that is not for certain. What is this special scenario? During the 1,000 ends they must endure, hungry ghosts, for example, become compassionate and want to protect people and other cultivators to bow along with people who are bowing to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and protect such cultivators. Having established merits such as this, they do not have to complete 1,000 aeons to be humans or animals. Or as animals, they draw close to Buddhists so they live in the temples or Buddhist families so that they practice and cultivate imperceptibly so that they believe in the Buddhas. Believing in the Buddhas, their offense karma is reduced so that they do not have to be in the animal realm for 1,000 ends. They become reborn as human beings. While Elder Master Su Yun was a Yunnan, for example, a chicken was brought to the temple. The chicken cultivated along with the temple residents. When the monks recite the Buddha's name in the ceremonies, it also followed along in circumambulating and reciting the Buddha's name. After three years, he passed away standing before the Buddhas. All these are special set of circumstances that exempts it for enduring 1,000 ends before becoming a human being. Were poor, lowly, and disabled individuals to know the reasons for their retribution, they would know that it is because they slandered the triple jewel, refused to listen to the Buddha Dharma, and were not respectful to earth stalking Bodhisattva. Now that they changed, they are bold and diligent. Perhaps they are vegetarians who recite the Buddha's name or cultivate even leaving the home life to become bishops. In reforming and renewing themselves, they will avoid falling into the evil paths soon. In general, depending on each living being's special set of circumstances, one may not have to go through such a long term of retribution. The Buddha Dharma is flexible and principled. You do not have to spend a long time suffering after repenting. The chapter on universal worthies conduct and vows says that people's offense karma are invisible. Were it to be material, then each individual's karmic obstruction would fill space to the brim and crack it open. Fortunately, karma obstruction is invisible, so there is no need to prepare a place to preserve it. So it does not matter how much there is of it. If you can repent, then however much offense, karma can be eliminated. That is why it says, bowing once to the Buddhas eliminates offenses as many as grains of sand. Truly repentant while bowing to the Buddhas then offense karma as many as grains of sand in the rivers will disappear. Give away one penny and add infinite blessings. Donate to the triple jewel to the best of your ability. Giving away however much you have, 
then you will enjoy infinite blessings as retribution, so long as you are sincere while you make your offerings. Everything is uncertain because the drama is not fixed. People's karmic obstructions are not fixed either. How much worse will the retributions be if, besides their slandering, they have other evil views? Not to mention if you develop some evil view to wreck the triple jewel in particular, then your offense karma will be even greater. Sutra. Moreover, universal expansive. In the future, men or women may be bedridden for a long time and in spite of their wishes, be unable either to get well or to die. At night, they may dream of evil ghosts or of family and relatives or of wandering on dangerous paths. In numerous nightmares, they may roam with ghosts and spirits. Commentary Moreover, universally expansive, Shakyamuni Buddha told universally expansive again. Let me elaborate a bit more for you. Universally expansive in the future, men or women who receive and cultivate the five precepts and then and the ten good deeds may be bedridden for a long time. Why are they bedridden? No need to ask. It is obviously because of some illness so that they are paralyzed and cannot get up. Why should someone become paralyzed? The source of the sickness is heavy lost because when paralyzed, one's legs are unusable. Legs are connected to the kidneys. Too much lust and the legs cannot walk. For instance, many people on the streets are disabled because of their swollen, swollen legs. To walk, they require the help of a cane. Their legs were not injured or amputated in the battle. They are disabled, so they have not incurred and any injury or accident. This type of individual has too much lust. There are many Americans with this problem. Why? They do not know the harm in this and fail to realize why their legs are this way even at the time of death. Consequently, they frequently remain immobile in their beds and, in spite of their wishes, be unable either to get well or to die. They cannot live well or die well. Is that painful? They cannot do so either way. At night, they may dream of evil ghosts. Some people dream of evil ghosts and follow them in doing all kinds of bad things. The more they do these things, the worse their illnesses get. Some examples of bad things that occur when they dream of evil ghosts and they are clear that these are evil ghosts and yet they follow them and eat bad things, do bad things and even engage in sexual activity in their dreams. Or they dream of family and relatives such as their deceased father or mother. These are negative occurrences because these relatives any relative who knows you, in fact, brings ghosts to the patient with the awful sickness then leaves. The ghosts then use their various corrupt powers to make the patient's sickness worse by the day. Or they dream of wandering on dangerous paths, such as falling off a mountain top and being terrified. Various inauspicious things occur in the dreams that scare these patients so that they are awfully afraid. In their dreams, tigers, wolves, or monsters may come along as they stroll along. In general, all kinds of prideful things occur. In numerous nightmares, they may roam with ghosts and spirits. Kumbandas may appear in their dreams often, perhaps three times or five times a night. They keep appearing because they feel their affinities with you are not done yet. You are, not, you are pressed upon so that you cannot utter any sound. You cannot breathe. You cannot move while your eyes are open as if in some demonic state of concentration. This would be a demonic state of concentration, not a proper state of concentration. 
There are different states of concentration and we should not enter this type of different concentration. These patients befriend ghosts and spirits in their dreams when they clearly know that they are ghosts. They go places with these ghosts. They do not know to be afraid of these ghosts in, in their dreams. They only become afraid when they wake up. Sutra, as days, months, and years go by, such people may become weak and emaciated, cry out in pain in their sleep, and become progressively more depressed and melancholy. Those things happen when the force of their karma has not yet been determined, making it difficult for them to die and impossible for them to be killed. The ordinary eyes of men and women cannot perceive such phenomena. In that situation, other people should, res should recite this sutra out loud once before images of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas on behalf of any such sick person, or they could offer to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas possessions that the sick person cherishes, such as clothing, jewels, gardens, or houses. They should speak distinctly to the sick person, saying, Now, before this sutra or these images, we are offering these items on behalf of this sick person. They may offer sutras or images or commission images of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas or built stupas or monasteries or light or lamps or give to the eternally dwelling. They should tell the sick persons three times about the offerings that are being made, making sure that they both hear and understand what is being done. If the sick pupils' consciousnesses are already scattered and their breathing has stopped, then for one, two, three, four, or on through seven days, the other pupils should continue to inform them clearly clearly of the offerings and to read the sutra out loud. When those sick people's lives end, they will gain liberation from all the heavy and disastrous offenses committed in previous lives, even offenses warranting, warranting fivefold relentless retribution. They will be born in places where they will always know past lives, so how much greater will the comic rewards be if good men or women can write out this sutra themselves or commission others to do so, or if they can carve or paint images themselves or commission others to do so? The benefits they receive will be great indeed. Therefore, universally expansive, if you see people reading and reciting this sutra, or even having a single thought of praise for it. Or if you meet someone who reveres it, you should employ hundreds of thousands of experience to exhort such people to be diligent and not retreat. In both the present and the future, they will be able to obtain thousands of billions of inconceivable meritorious benefits. Commentary as days, months, and years go by. Such people may become weak and emaciated for a long time. Not just one or two days, these people were very weak and emaciated. There are five types of disease and seven types of injuries. All five types of disease are incurable. They cry out in pain in their sleep. They wake up screaming because they were being pursued by ghosts, hit by ghosts or caused by ghosts, and they become progressively more depressed and melancholy. They always wear a miserable look on their face as if they are about to cry. They are never happy. Those things happen when the force of their karma has not yet been determined. Why is this? Their offense karma is being evaluated in their house. Their offense karma is being discussed as to whether it is slight or heavy. Although they have not died yet, the question is being discussed in their house. They are unhappy while alive. They are miserable because they committed offenses and they know they will go to the house in the future, making it difficult for them to die and impossible for them to be killed.
They may want to die, but cannot, or not so soon. All their illnesses do not heal so quickly. The, the ordinary eyes of men and women cannot perceive such a phenomena. Men and women do not know about this because they do not have the power of the heavenly eyes and the power of knowing past lives. What can they do considering what they do not understand? There is a way. In that situation, other people should recite this sutra out loud once before images of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas on behalf of any such sick person. Before of any Buddha, and any of the Buddha or Bodhisattva image, whether it is before an image of Earth Star Bodhisattva or other Bodhisattva images, if you do not have an Earth Star Bodhisattva image, recite the Earth Star Sutra very loudly. Or they could offer to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas possessions that the sick person cherishes, such as clothing, jewels, properties, gardens, or houses. They should speak distinctly or loud enough to the sick person, saying, Now, before this Earth Star Sutra, all these images of Earth Star Bodhisattva and others, we, say our names, are offering these items that the patient values the most, such as gardens, dwellings, clothing, and other material goods, on behalf of this sick person. They state the patient's name. They may offer sutras or images or commission images of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, the greatest merit or build jeweled stupas or monasteries or light or lamps before the Buddhas or give to the eternally dwelling in the temples. They should tell the sick person three times so that the sick hear it each time about the offerings that are being made making sure that they both hear and understand what is being done. If the sick people's consciousnesses, the eye consciousness, the ear consciousness, the nose consciousness, the tongue consciousness, the body consciousness, the sixth consciousness, the seventh consciousness, and the eighth consciousness are already scattered and their breathing has stopped, then for one, two, three, four, and on through seven days, the other people should continue to inform them clearly of the offerings and to read this sutra out loud and loudly. When those sick people's lives end, they will gain liberation from all their heavy and disastrous offenses committed in previous lives, even grave offenses warranting fivefold relentless retribution. They will be born in places where they will always know past lives. So how much greater will the karmic rewards be if good men or women can write out this sutra themselves or commission others to do so, or if they can carve or paint images themselves or commission others to do so, the benefits they receive will be great indeed. Therefore, universal is expansive. If you see people reading and reciting this Earth Star Sutra, or even have, having a single thought appraised for it, or if you meet someone who reveals it, you should employ hundreds of thousands of experience to exalt such people, to be diligent and not retreat in both the present and the future. They will be able to obtain thousands of billions of inconceivable meritorious benefits. Sutra Moreover, universally expansive beings in the future, while dreaming or drowsy, missing ghosts, spirits, and other forms that are either sad, weeping, worried, fearful, or terrified. Those are all fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, and other relatives from one, ten, a hundred, or a thousand lives past who have not yet been able to leave their bad destinies. They have nowhere to turn for the powerful blessings needed to rescue them, and so they try to communicate with their closest descend descendants, hoping that those relatives will use some skillful means to help them get out of the evil paths. Universally expansive, using your spiritual power, exalt those descendants to recite this sutra with sincere resolve, 
before the images of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, or to request the others to recite it, either three or seven times. When the sutra has been read, read out loud the proper number of times, relatives in the evil paths will obtain liberation and never again appear to those who are dreaming or drowsy. Commentary. Moreover, universally expansive Shakyamuni Buddha says, Let me explain it again for you in detail. If beings in the future, while dreaming or drowsy, while asleep or not quite in deep sleep, their dreams due to ignorant habits, individuals with muddled habits that come from ignorance have these dreams so that so they do not remember anything when they wake up from their dream. Their dreams of premonition, their dreams foretell some fortunate or unfortunate occurrence. For instance, Elder Master Su Yun dreamt of the sixth patriarch saying, you are going back, you are going to go there to do some work. Elder Master Su Yun thought returning meant that he was about to die, but it, it was actually telling him to go to Nanhua Monastery to repair the temple. This is an auspicious omen that foretold an event through a dream. Some people dream about being careful, otherwise they would die in a car accident. They do not believe it and indeed crashed the next day. They do not believe it and die in a car accident the next day. This is a dream that foretells events. There are also dreams due to imbalanced four elements. The four elements are earth, water, fire, and wind. According to medical texts, there are 404 human diseases and 808 antidotes. antidotes. Actually, there are 84,000 forms of human illnesses. That is why the Buddha Dharma says there are 84,000 practices that cure 84,000 illnesses. When the four elements are not in, in balance, such as an excess of earth, being an antidote of water makes one sick. An excess of fire, being an antidote of water, makes one sick. Or an excess of wind, being an uh, antidote for earth, makes one sick. These are illnesses from an imbalance of the four elements. There are so dreams about old time, long lost friends. What kind of dreams are these? For instance, I have not seen someone that I knew for a long time. I was happy to see him appear in my dream. I wake up though and realize that it is not real. These are dreams about long lost friends. There are as many dreams as described above, in their sleep or before dozing off. All beings may see ghost spirits with green faces, red hair, huge mouths, and sharp teeth, the length of elephant tusks, and other strange and scary forms that are either sad, weeping, tearing, or dripping snot, worried, fearful, or terrified. They may see scenes of their relatives who are very sad, miserable, and sigh. Those are all fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, and other relatives of one, ten, a hundred, or a thousand lives past who have fallen into and have not yet been able to leave the bad destinies of the hells, evil ghosts, and animals. This is why we should see all beings as our parents from the past and Buddhas in the future. If we consider living beings our parents in the past, then we should be filial and not cause problems for living beings. If we consider living beings future Buddhas, then we should be filial and not cause problems for living beings. Hope please, they have nowhere to turn for the power blessings needed to rescue them, such as through reciting the sutras and doing some meritorious deeds according to the Buddhist teachings as said in the Earth Star Sutra. Sutra recitations are done for the deceased and those not yet deceased. The power of blessings comes from reciting the sutras 
and so they try to communicate with their closest descendants in their former lives, hoping that those relatives will use some skillful means to help them get out of the evil paths. Universally expansive Shakyamuni Buddha called out again, Using your spiritual power, exhort those descendants to recite this earth star sutra with sincere resolve. Before the images of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, also request or employ others to recite it. Either three or seven times, these odd numbers are young numbers. The even numbers are yin numbers. Young numbers are symbols of breaking through the offense commas of the house. When the earth stone sutra has been read are allowed, the proper number of times the relatives in the evil paths will obtain liberation and never again appear to those who are dreaming or drowsy. Sutra Moreover, universally expensive people of low station and those who are slaves or bonded or debride deprived of their freedom in other ways may be aware of their past deeds and wish to repent of them and reform. If, while beholding and bowing to earth star Bodhisattva's image with sincere resolve for seven days, they are able to recite his name a full 10,000 times, then when their current retribution ends, those people will always be born into wealth and honor up for hundreds of thousands of lives, how much the more they will they avoid of any, any of the sufferings of the three evil paths. Commentary Moreover, universally expansive Shakyamuni Buddha says to him again, People of low station, we are all people, so how come there are people who belong to high class society and people who are lowly? There are five paths that lead people to the retribution of belonging to the lowest class. One are arrogance. Most people are arrogant to outsiders, but this kind of arrogance refers to being conceited with regard to and disrespectful toward one's parents. The second reason is obstinacy. They do not respect teachers and elders. These obstinate beings refuse to obey teachers and elders' teachings. The third reason is laxness, which is about to adhering to the rules. That does not matter so much. They are not even respectful toward the triple jewel. These three reasons make them become low-class individuals, including the poor. The affluent do not belong to the lowest class, whereas the poor do. The fourth kind is because they like to steal in life's past. Penniless, they steal things, money or jewelry that is sold in turn, sustaining themselves for a period of time with that what they stole. They do, not, they do nothing but eat, drink, haul, gamble, or do drugs such as opium, meanwhile. They do not need to work because of what they have stolen. When they finish up the money, they steal again, and they do nothing again for some time. They sustain themselves by stealing like this. This is the fourth reason why they are poor and of the lowest class. What do you think the fifth reason is? The fifth is evading their debts. People cannot be uncountable for even one penny, not to mention more than that. Though money is fake, you cannot use it casually. Though money is fake, it is necessary for doing real work. We cannot be casual about this at all. For example, you may think it is a bargain to borrow money, then abscond with it. Actually, it is no bargain because by evading debts, you will be poor and lonely in future lives. That will be the retribution. Above are the five reasons for becoming someone of low station. And those who are slaves, servants, or bonded, or deprived of their freedom in other ways have to listen to their master's orders and cannot go anywhere as they please, may be aware of their past deeds and wish to repent of them and reform. If they know that they must have incurred 
grave offenses and accumulated heavy karma from lives past. They must repent now. They bow to great compassion repentance, the pure land repentance, or other repentances. Why do we bow to great compassion repentance? We do this because we repent of offenses, though we do not know about our offenses in lives past. If by beholding and bowing to earth store Bodhisattva's image with sincerely so for seven days, they are able to recite his name a full ten thousand times, then when their current retribution ends, those people will always be born into wealth and honor for hundreds of thousands of lives. How much the more will they avoid any of the sufferings of the three evil paths? They will always be born in elite families and families and never endure the pain of the three evil paths. There are five reasons for poverty and several reasons for nobility too. First is vastly giving and benefiting, being greatly compassionate with everyone. Second is being respectful toward parents, teachers and elders. We ought not to hate our father nor bring us into the world, yelling at him. We ought not to hate our father for bringing us into the world, yelling at him. Why did you have to have me, you jerk? Or think about our master in this way. You do not let me have any freedom. I have to listen to you on everything. This is too unfair. We are dissatisfied with our master in various ways. We bow to our master but criticize our master behind his back. This is about not being respectful to our parents, teachers, and elders. One of the reasons why we are not born in an elite family. Is that harsh? Do not bother with whether I am a good master or not. You cannot criticize me because there is offense in that and you will not become born in an elite family. Second, respect parents, teachers, and elders. Earlier we talked about not being respectful. Now we have to be respectful toward our parents, teachers, and elders. Third, being respectful and bow to the triple drawer. Earlier we talked about not being respectful and not bowing to the triple drawer. This here is about being respectful and bowing to the triple drawer and all elders. Fourth, we must be patient, not angry, but gentle and humble. You must be happy and not at all afflicted, no matter who scolds you. Be patient when someone yells, yells at you. Be even more patient when someone beats you. Cultivate patience so that you are free of hatred, anger, and temper. It is not easy to acquire good retribution. Furthermore, you have to be gentle and humble, be polite and courteous to everyone. What is the fifth? It is erudition through listening to more sutras, encountering more dramas, and studying more precepts. These five reasons cause people to become allies who are rich and powerful. But it is not enough just to be rich and powerful due to causes in life's past. It would be best to be replaced with these five conditions. So just one condition will prevent someone from becoming born in a poor and lowly family. How come someone is so fine, so noble? It is through their past deeds. We do not acquire this kind of blessing so simply in this one lifetime. People who fulfill any or all of these five criteria do not need to face the three evil destinies of hell beings, hungry ghosts, and animals. They can become born in elite families directly.